Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. It is May 1st of uh, 2020, right around the eighth week of COVID. This video from my SEO guy is going to be about kind of a load calc for basements. I already did one general about it, but it's going to be a little bit more in detail. So when you're looking at a basement, guys, um, first of all, if you hear some of my videos, look, you need to read the code book, okay? What's taken me 22 years to understand and know is not for me, for you to call up from Florida and ask me a bunch of questions or Alabama, Tennessee, China. I had an Australia and a European and Canadian. And them all call me up, ask me a bunch of questions how to do stuff. I'm not a teacher, okay? I was a teacher years ago, but um, I don't teach. I just do YouTube videos to try to help people out. Mostly, it's here to help electricians. That's always been my goal. And I have never said I'm a DYI guy. I do good on YouTube quite a bit, ask a bunch of questions or look. I don't really ask questions, but I look at people's videos. Um, so I always believe in trying to give back rather than just take. So some of you people like to beat me up all the time. I try to be as loud as I can, but I understand a few things. One, I'm in their home. And two, once the job's done, roughed in, I can't get back in their home and talk about it. They're going to put drywall up and I'm going to come back at trim. And if you have to link the video together to figure out trim because it took them six months to a year to figure it out, then figure it out. I'm not going to be wearing the same shirt either, right? But if I do three, four videos on an area and you catch it, the shirt's the same, the date's the same. I've been changing that last two years. I am trying to talk louder, but sometimes they're upstairs and they're working and I can't talk so loud. Turn up your volume. Actually, you know what's really best? Try to get some bows and turn up the volume. That really seemed to help me to hear people's videos. Um, but complaining about it's not going to change anything. I did take my banner down too, by the way. So anyways, moving on for future here. When you're looking at your load calc, you need to look in the code. Article 220.42 talks about 210, 210.20. There's a lot of code articles that talk about how to figure out a load calc, all right? Very basic, three volt amperes per square foot. This does include unfinished area. But keep in mind, that's the bare minimum. The issue I see with that when I bid a basement against some of these guys in northern Colorado, and they're bidding at three volt amperes per square foot, a thousand square foot basement I might only end up with like 4.25 circuits and they put in four or five. Maybe you should look at it at five volt amperes per square foot so you're not popping the circuits all the time. Or maybe you should be putting in a 12 gauge wire and a 20 amp and a wall for a whole living exercise area, not putting in 14 gauge, put in 12, 20 amp circuit. Um, when you're figuring out, you got to figure out heat, light, cooling, power. You got to figure out um, dedicated circuits, what the area is going to be allowed to be. Bathrooms, of course, have their a bunch of different circuits. Kitchenettes, kitchens, wet bars, and dry bars are totally different things too. The code is not really specific on that. It's kind of great. Some of it's just based on the fact of asking the customer what they're going to have in here. We're going to have exercise equipment in here. They want cove heaters. They said they want to have um, a microwave, ice maker, and fridge, and a disposal. All of that's very specific. No steam shower. I did ask that. We put in a bidet or a circuit for a, a bidet. They want a heat fan light combo kit. A light fan is fine on the circuit, but a heat? Oh, no, you have to have a dedicated circuit. So all of a sudden, this little 650, 600 square foot basement is turned into 13 circuits, which normally might be six. Not based on one circuit per 100 square foot. It's not that at all. I'm just saying in general, it could be six to eight. But this has got 13. All of it was listed and labeled. I already knew before I did it, pulled any wire and boxed much. I already knew what my circuits were going to be and what they were serving. Keeping in mind my AFCI versus my GFCI, my 15 amp versus my 20 amp, my dual functions... Um, my quad that I'm putting in right here, what's a quad? That's a quad. So when I look at all that, making sure this panel is going to be big enough so I don't cut it all in and go, oh my God, I got to rip it out. I'm too small of a panel, right? 1224 circuit. This guy, when he roughed in the panel, I wish I could show you this, but there's a piece of wood right here and there's a gap. But they put it where literally my panel was from this wood to this wood. Like, we've got to come in the top and the bottom. So railings on the side is perfect, and we'll come in top and bottom. But when I was figuring out my load, I know my, my cove heaters were 170 watts per square, per linear foot. I knew I had a certain amount of feet. I had my bath circuit, the code says. 
a certain amount of watts. I have my mini fridge, my ice maker, my disposal. I look those up. My bath plug again. I'm oh, sorry, that's a bath heater, heat fan light combo kit. And then I had my kitchen bar, freezer, bidet, and then uh, my square footage of 600 square foot. I took it down about 13%-ish. Uh, so about 8,500 watts divided by 240, 35 amps. Divided by 60 amp, 50 amp breaker. I'm 59 to 79% on a breaker. You're supposed to try to maintain around 80 to 90% less to, you know, just so you don't overheat it. I'm going to be totally fine. So when the guy called me up, uh, it was like, uh, I think you saw that in my other video, but last week, and he wanted me to wire just his sub panel, slap in 100 to 125 amp, had no steam shower, was not growing weed, was not doing Bitcoin currency, was not putting in a hot tub out back. And I'm like, dude, why do you need that much power? It's a thousand square foot. Right. You're not having a second cooking unit like an oven because in northern Colorado, you're not allowed to have two electrical cooking ovens in most homes. So if you put a little 30 amp, you know, skid plate or some kind of drop in cooktop, yeah, then you might need 60 amps. If you have co heaters, you might need 100. But it wasn't all that. It's just based on the fact that you thought it was a lot of square footage. That's not how you do your globe calc. And another customer called me up and he added all the breakers. 15 plus 15 plus 20 plus 30 plus 50 plus 30 plus 50 plus 40 plus. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I need 800 amps. I was like, that's not how you do your load calc. I know you got a 42 circuit panel by what you said, but that's not how you do your load calc. Okay. So again, if you don't understand load calc and you're really not in that right brain mind of a person, mechanically inclined, maybe you should just hire a pro. But please don't call us up from another state or country or another planet in Mars and ask us how to do that stuff. We're... You know, that doesn't have any benefit to our company, but all this, the, the fact that it's just going to be more of a liability. So, again, if you don't understand that, don't wire it. If not, then go to school like I did, right? So, the point of the matter is, is that this is a general idea that even in a small basement, if we were to count per opening, we have 70 openings in this basement. Where I count two per opening is going to be things like building and hanging a ceiling fan, Hang in a cove heater. Um, and by the way, cove heaters are bid in a little bit separate because they have to buy the unit and the unit staff. But um, most of all of this can trim and everything, we just count it by one per opening. There's three, three switches in that bank. There's three openings. But the bottom line is when you go through all of this, there were 75 openings in a 600 square foot. The more rooms you have and the more choppy, the more openings you have to create. Because look at this. This is 28 inches. And this is 30 inches. You have to have an outlet and you have to have an outlet. They'll never, ever use them. What are you going to use them for? A vacuum? It doesn't matter. Code says over 20 inches and it's not a hallway. You have to have one. So I showed you that in the other video. So keep in mind when you're doing your load calc, when you're figuring this stuff out, um, there is a lot of things on here I kind of gave you, okay? But I do base my basements more on closer probably to 5 volt amperes per square foot. Because 3 is not enough. 1,000 square foot basement, do the math, 4 circuits. I think you should need 6 to 7 to be safe. Why not do some of the lighting separate? Why not step up the circuit? So when we wire more custom for people, we're not always looking for the customer looking for the best price just to bang it out and sell the house. If that's what they want, they should just probably call someone else. We're never the highest bid and we're never the lowest bid, but we're always right there in the middle of the other two guys that are good. But we always like to put in a little bit extra. So like this basement, we're putting in some LED. Uh, if you look at my last video, some nice indirect lighting. I'll show you real quick. We'll do like a nice little LED strip here, little LED strip in that kid's mug, little LED strip inside of here. And then in this unfinished area, which is not big. And we're putting in our transformer and our switchable transformer. So, anyways, guys, if, if a lot of the material and the parts and the tools, the tools alone, if you don't have the tools, I mean, as you're a homeowner watching my video, I respect that. A DIY. But I got two of these. You're going to need a 5.8. Some guys draw little holes and some do way too big of holes. There's new codes on how many wires can you stick inside of a hole. That's kind of a bar joke, right? 
And that one, I was probably pushing it a little bit up there. I got one, two, three, four, five. But they, they're trying to treat it. This is how stupid the code's getting, just to be frank. If you're watching it, NEC. You guys are worried about, oh, 10 Romex is in a hole. Because the neutrals count as current carrying. And you can't have more than 7 to 9. Or you derate your wire from 70% down to 50%. But then you allow a nipple less than 2 inches in a panel to be stuffed 100% full. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Point of the matter is, guys, when you're drilling your holes, don't put too many wires in there. I try not to do more than 3 to 4. If I get 5 near a panel, I try to route a couple around. Most inspectors are like, yeah, this is a tight area. But keep in mind, though, if you also don't know where to put your panel, you're going to be in trouble. Make sure that's important. We did put this closer. We still have to go out through the garage and pipe in the garage, and we'll have to transfer Romex to a THWN-2 wire in a conduit out in the garage. Are we doing that because it's outdoor rated? No, no. THW wire is rated for outdoors, for like hot tubs. But if you've ever tried pulling a 6.3 Romex through a 3 quarter or a 1 inch, with a bunch of bends, it does not go. And you can't slit it and then shove it in. You're not allowed to take the jacket off either because there's no rating. And they got you on 210. What was that? 310.104 on that? It's getting so picky. It's like, really? There's some common sense to create, not create a fire. And there's common sense to do something stupid. But the bottom line is that, you know, when you're pulling in Romex, you want to make sure it goes smooth. I mean, guys that come in and go through their 90-degree hole and then staple it right on the side, you will be tripping your arc fault. You don't know what you're doing. These arc faults are so sensitive, you can't do that. In fact, I use a lot more stacks. I don't even care how much they cost. I just don't want my stuff hit. So stuff like this... This garbage disposal... In case the plumber's in my way, I can figure out how to cut that bracket out with a sawzall, pull it off, pull out this stack. I met code within 12 inches, but it's loose, it's tight, but then I don't have my plumber coming in here or someone hitting it. So there's times that I'll just staple it tight, you know, really tight, because I know this is my shower. And he's going to be putting in a shelf for his shampoo. If you do that back to back to KitchenAid, your plumber loves you because it's cheaper, right? But put in the two by six wall, back to back. That way everybody can get their crap inside, it, especially vent stacks. But nowadays plumbers, they're getting a little lazy. They got all this PEX pipe and they do those little stack vents out. They don't even have to go outside anymore with that stuff. It's amazing. Their trade got easier, mine got harder. Anyways, um, guys, yeah. So if you're considering doing your own basement, when you're done with the basement, Guess what? About a thousand foot roll. I'll be using this for a couple basements. So, the tools are really important. Um, you might be just better off hiring it out. If you're kind of on that teeter tot fence, you know, I bought in tools uh, to do my roof and I didn't think I'd use them again, but I did do a shed, so I did have to put on the same stuff and use my same gun to put on my material for my shed. So there are some benefits. Painting, I thought, oh, use my painter one time on the outside of my house. I ended up later spray painting, uh, not spray painting, um, excuse me, uh, spraying my cabinet doors. So I was able to do that in the garage in the winter, like two years later. And I was like, oh, good. So all of a sudden, those tools I bought, they kind of like, yeah, I'm using them more. But if you're not going to sure you're ever going to do that again, don't do it. Just hire a person out. But if you're going to hire it out, look at the things that I've told you, some of these ideas. They might help you out so you don't end up tripping circuits later. Be in mind that your inspector is not looking at where your circuits go and how much they should support. If you decide to come down there in a brand new basement and put in a Nordic track running and you're exercising down there and you have the same circuit and your husband wants to jog with you, trip over in ampacity. Uh, even on a 15-up circuit, some can trip them as they ramp up. Um, but yeah, so the only other thing I want to mention is that if you're going to decide to ever do like a uh, a beer um, uh, brewing, I've wired in, uh, last one I did last year was 70 amps on brewing. You would need a 125-amp circuit. And the most you can stab on a breaker outside is 125 amps.
Thanks, guys, for joining us. Sorry it was a little bit long. Hopefully some good uh, tidbits for you. Take care.